Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's an A-level maths video here on integration and using the reverse of the chain rule. So in this video, I'd like us to be able to integrate uh, functions by reversing the chain rule and we're going to integrate standard functions. Now in the first video I did on integration, we developed these nine results here. So these were the nine functions we worked out how to integrate and remember, when we perform an indefinite integral, there are no limits here, we always get a plus constant. So, in this particular video, what I'd like to move on to is developing the following types of integrals. So I would like us to be now able to integrate very, very similar functions to the ones I've just, uh, I have up there. So very similar functions indeed. Apart from, do you notice what's different? Well, in each of these cases, they're very similar functions, whereas apart from an x here, so apart from an x, I've got ax plus b, a linear combination of x's, so some lots of x's and a constant. Instead of 1 over x here, I've got 1 over ax plus b. Instead of e to the x, I've got e to the ax plus b. Instead of cos x, I've got cos ax plus b. And the same pattern continues. So basically, in this video, I'm developing very similar results to the ones I've already got, apart from the fact that uh, instead of just having a single x, I've got something like 2x add 4, something like that, okay? Now, it's very important that you realize that what I'm going to show you in this video only applies to linear combinations. So something of the form ax plus b, uh, the, these functions in the form f of ax plus b. It would not apply when this is more complicated. For example, you have x squared in there or 1 over x or anything like that. It only applies in the cases where you've got something like, I don't know, cosine of 3x take away 5. These are the results I'm trying to, I'm trying to integrate functions like that and this is what this video is about. It would not help me integrate functions such as the cosine of, I don't know, x squared take away 5 because x squared is a quadratic. And I'll show you towards the end why that is actually true. But for now, just these are the things we're trying to integrate in this video. All of these, we're going to use the same ideas we got in the first video. It's a very similar idea. I'm going to do this video by way of an example. The key idea I want us to think about throughout the video until we generate um, the results is when you're trying to integrate this thing here, the thing you're trying to integrate is called the integrand. This thing here is called the integrand. Now, we are integrating this function. What I want you to think about, this is the key question, what type of function, not what exact function is yet, what type of function differentiated to give you this? So that when you integrate that, you get back to it, back to the original function you differentiated. Okay, and this is the way I want us to have a think about it. What type of thing differentiated to this? Well, something like this, but it had to be to one higher power, didn't it? So imagine, this is just working. I'm going to denote it working. Imagine we had an original function, y is equal to 2x add 3 to the power of 5. And we differentiated that function. The differential of this, well, what would it be? You'd multiply by the 5, you'd multiply by the differential of the bracket, and you'd keep the bracket as it was, but you'd reduce it to 1 power. So dy by dx would be equal to 10 2x add 3 to the power of 4. Okay? Right, so with that in mind, continuing our work, and bear that in mind, if we were to integrate 10 2x add 3 to the power of 4 with respect to x, if I was to integrate this, surely I'd get this back. I would get 2x add 3 to the power of 5 plus a constant. But I want to integrate just one lot of 2x add 3 to the power of 4, not 10 lots. So surely then it would be clear to you that the integral of 2x add 3 uh, to the power of 4 with respect to x, not 10 of this, just one of this, well it would be one tenth of this answer. It would be one tenth of 2x add 3 to the power of 5 plus a constant. Okay, and this all was working to get us this. Now, let's think about it. If we did differentiate this, the 5 would come down, the 2 would multiply, and that tenth would be multiplied by 10, and it would give us the exact result. So, what I did in this, uh, in order to do this, I 
I thought about what function differentiated to get me at 2x plus 3 to the power of 4, and then I did an adjustment, uh, whatever constant I get outside the front, I divided by that. Now, just as a quick note to yourself, this is a, a way you could think about doing it quicker. You're being asked to integrate the following. I know it must come from 2x add 3 to 1 higher power because when I differentiate, I go down. And when I differentiate it, I multiply by 5 and multiply by this 2 here. So when I'm integrating, I'm going to divide by those 5 and 2. So I'm going to divide by the 5 and the 2. Uh, which would be dividing by 10, and I'm going to add a constant. Now, we're going to keep going by showing this working process, but over time you'll be able to spot this quicker. Let's try another one. Let's integrate this. Now, let's think, what type of function differentiated to give us that integral? Well, let's do some working. Suppose I had a function, e to the power of 4x add 1. If I differentiated this, what would I get? Well, I differentiate the exponent, which would be 4, and I'd get e to the power of 4x add 1. So hopefully you'd agree with me that if I integrated 4e to the 4x add 1 with respect to x, if I integrate this, I would get this back. I would get e to the 4x add 1 plus a constant. Okay, plus a constant. So I'm not, I, I don't want to integrate 4 lots of this. In the question, I want to integrate 1 lot of this. So the integral of e to the 4x add 1 with respect to x must be a quarter of this answer. So it would be a quarter e to the 4x add 1 plus a constant. I could just leave plus c because constant is, is still a constant if you divide by 4. Okay, so that's the answer. Now how could I have got there just straight away without having done that working? Well, I know that the only thing that differentiates to e to the 4x add 1 would be a function of e to the 4x add 1. When I differentiated, I would have multiplied by this 4. So when I integrate, I'm going to divide by that 4. And I'd obviously get a constant of integration. So working, if you want to do the working, absolutely fine. If you can start seeing it quicker, absolutely fine. Let's have another go at this one. Think about what type of function differentiated to give you this. So say you had a function y is equal to the natural logarithm of 3x add 2. Say I differentiated that. When you differentiate um, a logarithm, you differentiate inside the brackets, which will give you 3, and you divide it by the original expression 3x add 2. So if I was asked to integrate 3 over 3x add 2, with respect to x, I know I would get the natural logarithm of 3x add 2 plus a constant. Okay, But I'm not asked for that. I'm asked for the integral of 1 over 3x add 2 with respect to x. So I know it's a third of this answer, so it would be a third the natural logarithm of 3x add 2 plus that constant. Okay, And again, how could I do it in one move? in one move, if I'm asked to integrate 1 over the uh, one over 3x add 2 with respect to x, I know that um, the only things that differentiate to 1 over x's are logarithms. So it would be a logarithm of this expression, 3x add 2. If I was differentiating this thing, I would end up a multiple, uh, getting 3 over 3x add 2. I don't want the 3 there, so I must divide by the 3, i.e. a third, and you get your constant of integration. Okay, let's have a go at this one. We're now integrating the cosine of 2x add 3. Firstly, some working. Let's think what type of function differentiated to give cosine of 2x add 3. Suppose we had y is equal to sine of 2x add 3. And we differentiated this. dy by dx, we, by the chain rule, differentiate inside, um, the, sine, uh, inside the sine, so we would get 2. And the differential of sine is cosine and we would get 2x add 3. So, going backwards, the integral of 2 cosine 2x add 3 with respect to x must be equal to sine 2x add 3 plus some constant. I don't want to integrate two of them, I only want to integrate one of them, so therefore the integral of cosine of 2x add 3 with respect to x must be um, a half this answer, so it would be a half sine of 2x add 3 plus a constant. How could I have done it quickly? 
Well, I must integrate cosine of 2x add 3 with respect to x. I know um, that sines are the things that differentiate to cosine. So when I'm integrating cosine, I must get a sine of 2x add 3. Think about when I was differentiating this, I would have multiplied by the 2. So when I'm integrating, I divide by the 2. And don't forget to add your constant of integration. Right. Uh, another example, example 5, um, suppose we were integrating sec squared of 3x with respect to x. Let's think what type of function differentiates the sec squared of 3x. Well, hopefully you'll realise that tan of 3x, that would differentiate to something of the right form. Because if I had an original function tan of 3x, dy by the x would be 3 sec squared of 3x. So if I was integrating 3 sec squared of 3x with respect to x, surely you would realise I would get tan of 3x plus a constant. But I'm not asked to integrate 3 sec squared 3x, I'm actually asked to integrate 1 sec squared of 3x with respect to x. So therefore this would be a third of the answer, so it would be a third tan of 3x plus a constant, like that. Okay? Um, and how could I have done this in one move? Well, if I'm integrating sec squared 3x and I'm thinking what type of thing differentiated to sec squared, I realise it must be tan of 3x. When I was differentiating this, I would have multiplied by the 3. When I'm integrating, I'm going to divide by the 3, like that. And you get your plus constant. Okay, a word of caution. They're the five examples I wanted to do. Hopefully they make sense to you. Here's my word of caution. This only works with if you're integrating things like the cosine of 2x add 3 with respect to x. Let's just think about what that would have been again. What must have differentiated to give me some form of cosine? Well, a sine of 2x add 3, certainly. If I differentiate sine of 2x add 3, I get 2 cosine 2x add 3. So I want to make sure I divide by that 2 and I put my constant in. I cannot do this with functions of the form, for example, cosine of x squared at 3, for example. If I applied the same rule, so if I said, well, this must have come from a sine of x squared at 3. And what I'm going to do is if I differentiate this, I get 2x sine x squared at 3. So I'm going to divide by the 2x, so I'm going to say 1 over 2x, add c, like that, applying the same rule. This now, if we check whether this differentiates to this, we'll find it doesn't. And the reason it doesn't is because uh, before, when we were dividing, we were just divided by a number. Now we're dividing by some function of x, and that ruins the whole process. So if I was to try differentiating this function, if I was to try differentiating uh, y equals 1 over 2x sine of x squared add 3. If I was to try differentiating that, I'd use the product rule where that's u and that's v. That's not supposed to be an integral, that's just supposed to show it's a product. And it would be uv dash plus vu dash. And trust me, we'd get nothing close to cos of x squared add 3 at all. So it's very important that these rules, you only realise they work for the standard functions and something like 2x add 3 and ax plus b4. Anything more complicated, an x squared, an e to the x, a logarithm x, anything more complicated, it doesn't work at all. So, just to finish off, these were the things we learned about in the previous videos. These are the new type of functions we tried to integrate in this video. And I'm going to finish off by saying what the standard results are. You can just, uh, you could, after doing a while, you just start remembering these. So, integrating this, it came from an ax plus b to the power of m plus 1, but you had to divide by this 1 over a here. And don't forget your plus c in each case. What about in this case? Well, it came from a logarithm of ax add b, but you have to divide by that a. It came from an e to the ax plus b that was differentiated, but you have to divide by the a. And you can spot the process. It's going to be the same. It's going to be all these results here, but just 1 over a. It's going to be the differential of this bracket that you're dividing by. So in each of these cases, it will be 1 over a sine ax plus b plus some constant. Here it's going to be negative 1 over a cosine of ax plus b 
plus a constant. Here it's going to be 1 over a tan of ax plus b plus a constant. Here it's going to be a negative 1 over a cot of ax plus b plus a constant. And here, I'm just going to do this in different colour, it's going to get messy, it's going to be negative 1 over a sec of ax plus b plus some constant. And lastly here, it's going to be negative, sorry, that wasn't a negative here, that was a positive. And here it's going to be negative 1 over a cosec ax plus b plus some constant. And they are the rules that we have learned. Um, uh, so basically they're extending everything in video one when instead of a single x you have got an ax plus b you get the same results but you have to divide by the a as well. Okay so now we've finished that read uh, the following and do exercise 6b you should be able to do all of that now. Thanks for watching.